the reality is that nobody prepares women for the decline in sexual market value. And so they panic, they freak out, they get depressed, they get anxious, they start nagging. And then the guys can't stand them, they divorce the guys and run to the state. So that they never have to face the fact that the value came from their eggs, not their fundamental innate quality as human beings. And this is why it's so hard for women to let go of the state. Letting go of the state for women means that they have to find a way to bring enormous value to men at a time in their 40s and 50s when their sexual market value is collapsing. And that is a fundamental reorientation. And what they do instead is they, they fucking bitch on men to no end, a lot of them, so that the man never realizes his sexual market value. And then they set up a family court and alimony system to the point where if any man ever tries to exercise his sexual market value because he can't, can't stand the increasingly bittered and shrewd woman he's living with, she'll use the state to cut his balls off and then he can't get anything else. Right. So women are not saying women should be saying, oh, God, just get rid of this alimony, get rid of this child support and all that. Guys, forget all that crap. I, I, I want to keep my marriage by being an irresistibly great woman. That's that's how I it's embarrassing. You know what a confession of unattractiveness it is for women to make divorce so unpleasant for men? What they're confessing is <laughs> that. Middle-aged marriage is such a vicious and soul-destroying and ball-crushing enclosure for men that they have to have lawyerly snipers shoot the balls off any man who tries to escape. I mean, if women were really confident in the value that they're bringing to men, they should want to get rid of all of this stuff because it's humiliating. So there's, there's, there's two, two groups that benefit from till death do us part. And I'm not saying the man doesn't. But the two groups are women and children, right? Because, and, and the reason for that is that the woman gives up her youth and fertility for the sake of raising children, and the man gives up resources. Now, the man can continue to have children into his old age, but the woman can't. And the man, because he accumulates more and more resources as time goes along, becomes more, sex, more, um, more of a value from a reproductive standpoint, not necessarily from a liver spots and wrinkles standpoint, but from a resource standpoint at a sort of purely utilitarian level. There is a decline in quality of, of sperm and so on, but nonetheless, the man's value as a, a provider continues to increase over the course of his life, whereas the woman's fertility declines and extinguishes, you know, before her life is half done with any luck, right? So the until death do us part is the woman's way of saying, well, I'll give you youth, fertility, and children, but then you have to not trade me in for a younger model when I get older, right? Uh, when, when I get older, I don't want you, because the man, if he's long lived and successful, can have two families, maybe more. Right, so he can get to, his kids can get to some sort of, and again, this stuff all, all developed when kids were sort of more mature in their mid-teens, right? So the man can get married at 20, and by 35 or 40, his kids can be grown, and then he can trade in his wife and get a younger model and start again, right? And this would be ben of benefit to his genetics, right? And so the, the until death do us part is it's better for the children, if the man's resources are devoted to them and it's better for the children if the grandparents are in a stable relationship and um, available and so on. And so societies generally tend to stabilize in pair bonding. You keep the DNA uh, proximity and women are more likely and more willing to surrender themselves into the raising of children if they know they're going to be taken care of in their old age. Because if women see around them, oh, so I donate uh, 15 years of my life to raising this guy's kids and I don't have any resources of my own and that I just get tossed into the scrap heap while he goes for another woman, no thank you. Right? So women need to feel that their investment is going to be paid off even though the man's value is increasing as a resource provider, although her value as a, um, as a breeder you know, is extinguished in any sort of you know, late, late uh, early 40s kind of thing. It, it really gets too, too risky for, for a lot of people to continue. So when you say, well, why is it until death do us part? Well, it's for very sensible, practical, and well-established reasons, which, you know, tragically have been hidden from you and have been hidden from me.